Anita Guerra, and I'm living the low life. Today on Living the Low Life, it's the wild world of rockabilly style where riding low meets vintage cool. We'll see classic rides, radical characters, Naughty Boy and Dirty Steve. And if Vita's not careful, she just might find herself getting nice and inked. Uh oh. Ride. There are many ways to define the term lowrider. Is it something that goes fast? There you go. There you see him? Oh, my God. Is it something that hops high? I like that. Three-wheeling with Vita Guerra? Priceless. How you doing? <laughs> Vita Guerra is on the road again, looking for a whole new lowlife twist. Living the lowlife. And she's going to find out that this new trend is nothing new. Are you guys ready to go on a trip? Let's hit the road! This is the low-riding world of rockabilly lifestyle. And these cats, along with their classic machines, are taking the movement to a whole new party. The rockabilly is more it's like uh, from the 50s. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. You know, some people are calling it rockabilly. I think it's just a big combination of different styles, different stilos that are out there. You know, you got your lowrider style, you got, you know, your 70s trollo, you know what I mean? You got some uh, 50s and 40s. Greece style is like, uh, you know, the primer cars, pinstripe, no shiny paint, you know, it's kind of different. It's different, it's custom, it's culture, it's, it's, it's art. It's like, oh, like how they say hip hop, how it, how it was developed from, from the heart, from the soul. Is it analog or digital? Rough. Let's hit the road. This movement pays homage to a time that even predates the term lowrider. That was back when every modified car was called a hot rod. Try and keep that tradition alive, you know? Vita's gonna check in with the crew that continues to carry the torch. Brothers from another Same brothers. Brothers. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go over to Dirty Steve's and meet up with Johnny. Dirty Steve's is where vintage rides go to get a whole new lease on life. This shop is the place where the low riding lifestyle meets up with rockabilly cool. How you guys doing? It's also the home of the perfect schedule. They hang out with friends and work on cars. This is a nice, good life you got going on. This looks like fun. I can do this all the time. <laughs> it's time to meet Johnny Vargas, a proud member of the Viejitos Car Club, an organization that does practice its own strict form of age discrimination. Viejitos is a car club, huh? Yes, ma'am. And that's like, that means old yep. men, right? Or, or old, old people. Old people, old men, yeah. So is it because the cars are old and? Yeah. Well, they might be old, but that doesn't mean they aren't all running and able. Yeah, you, there's no way we'll trailer a car. The stuff, we won't even let you come. Oh, so you don't like this for the trailer queens, huh? Nah, no offense to anybody else, but no. Nah, me personally, cars are meant to be driven. Yeah. Know? Honestly, to me, these are the baddest cars in the world. Right, baby! They can be totally glossed up, they can be fully accessorized, they can even redefine the very meaning of opulence. Yeah, there's a lot of room here in the world of low riding, and that means that variety is a welcome world in this multi-layered car culture. So even if your ride has never seen a proper spray booth, you can still be a low rider. 
And of course, some lowriders have nicknames. Naughty boy and dirty Steve. So why do they call you dirty Steve? No one's allowed to know. This guy right here, Wino, gave me the nickname. So Wino? No comment. Every great friendship has a story, so let's listen up. I want to know how you guys met. How long ago? Uh, we met a while ago at Club FH. We were trying some stuff out, dancing and stuff. Punch up, punch up, punch up. Hey! It happens. All right, one more time. Dirty Steve is a member of a car club known as the Night Owls, a group with a lot of history. Night Owls was actually established back in the 50s. Uh, Wino and I resurrected it about 10 years ago. Now we do uh, 58 and older only, mainly GM, no 58. Fords. And the Eagles do 54. 54 and older. So you guys fight about that? Cause... No. The only thing we fight about, he hates airbags. I love him. He'll learn. Talk about a perfect example of an early lowrider. Check this out. Uh, it's a 1950 Chevy Deluxe. Uh, we did a notch on the frame, two link rear suspension with a panhard, so it makes it a three link. Mm -hmm. Air ride suspension, uh, it lays as low as it can lay with an enclosed drive line. It lays the pipes flat on the floor. Does it drive like this too, or just? It can drive light? about an inch up from this. Okay. And uh, very careful with the potholes. For sure. Here's a ride for a time when families were big and gas prices were low. Okay, this is my baby right here. The interior is not perfect. The inside is not perfect at all. You know, it's got a little rust here and there. But you know, it's, it's got its history. Yeah, it's got and its, its it history. Makes you feel good, right? Yeah. Let's check out a couple more that still have their history on display. Hey, look at this. There's Bambi in here. Check it out, Vita. Bambi. Gangster Bambi. She got the three dots right there. Maybe it'll look all right there. <laughs> but I wanted a wagon. I actually take my dog to the beach in this car all the time. So it's my dog, Darla. That's It's her car. It's her car? It's her car. So is the car's name Darla? No, no. actually, it's uh, I can't say it. It, it. It's a nasty name, but the car has a name. You guys and your dirty names. It happens. <laughs> it's Orange County. <laughs> Here's Johnny's latest addition. You know, my it. uncle had something like this in Cuba. Yeah. You know, if you go to, if you go to Cuba, you could get a bunch of these cars. I've heard. They're everywhere. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. But you have to be careful when you bring home another girl. It's funny because the cars get jealous, though. You know. They do, huh? Yeah. That's exactly what happened when he brought home this 1950 Deluxe. The next day, I tried to take this one out, and she wouldn't start. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, See. they get a little jealous sometimes, you know. You gotta give. But it's a true story, love. though. This is something Vita knows all too well. Yeah, because every time I try to like work on the cars, like do the hydraulics, they always break down. Here on Low Life, jealous rides have it out for Vita Guerra. Down. Oh. Up. Uh-oh. You may want to stand back. Broke it. <laughs> I broke it! Ooh. What? What did I do? My whole theory why the car just did what it did is because she got jealous because I was in the car and she's like, nah, that's my man. Bam. I have no control over here. I'm so sorry. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Oh, yeah. I just want to make her bounce. Bounce. Oh, bananas, baby. <laughs> Primered cars, greaser hair, and hot rods. But don't be confused. You're watching Live in the Low Life. We're at Mooch's Tattoo Shop, where you can get inked and see a great car show. It's the perfect combination, because those who personalize their ride are often the same cats who want to personalize their hide. You know what it is, man? This is the only thing out there that's got style. Even though the low-riding world is often thought of as a Latino community, these drivers remind us that it's also about classics from Detroit. In fact, to some, low-riders are the ultimate American rides. We want to keep our American tradition, and, and the way to do it is with these right here. This is just 100% American tradition right here. Here's a ride that's one of the coolest 60-year-olds you're ever going to see. 
my 49 Chevy right there. Airbagged it, um, put a 350 in it, a 700 Trans, a Camaro rear end. Turning people's heads, you know, that's the coolest thing, you know? 54 Chevy, came stock with a straight six, so pulled that out, because it won't do 100 miles an hour on the freeway. Put a 350 in it, 700 R tranny with the overdrive because of freaking gas prices. Well, it's a 1937 Chevy. Chopped it, put a 350 in it, 700 tranny, notched it. Some modifications make these rides into more than just cars. It's a 48 Buick. It was converted into a pickup. Yeah, you know, it's the first 48 Buick pickup that I know of. You know? This is a 1954 Ford. It's got a big block Ford in it. It's juiced, it's chopped, it's it's not sectioned, it's, it's been lowered, it's everything shaved. I've got a Pontiac grill, I've got Lincoln chrome. Everything's custom on this car. There's, there's nothing that's actually Ford but the car itself. And speaking of custom work, Vita's about to get hers. All right, you ready to go? Okay. All right, just put your uh, chin down on your chest there and kind of just lean forward a little bit. Further. Yeah, fantastic, right there. Got a heavy hand? No. Tough line. No. Like all tattoos, this one has a story. Vita and some of her friends shared a perilous adventure while vacationing in Cancun. Having survived the watery ordeal, the group inked a pact. So me and my friends, we almost all drowned. We all got the same tattoo. I think tattooing is getting more, a little more personal now, you know. Um, they want something that they're going to remember that time of their life that they were in. Same with the low riding thing, you know, people are kind of customizing their cars to where they want it to fit them. Back outside, a club called the Troublemakers is showing off their stuff, starting with this radical custom. It's a 52 Chevy, um, it's all chopped. A buddy of mine painted it, he's also in the car club. Etched bumpers, airbags, the whole dashboard's all airbrushed. Pretty much everything's custom on it, you know? Nothing is stock. Graphics and pinstripes are the tattoos of a car. And whether you create on skin or metal, it's often hard to know when to stop. Every new assignment shapes a new work of art. Every time I do it, I try to do something different, and it's just every time it's like a new thing. It's a lot of fun. And I go, okay, I can make it or break it or be done with it. I think low riding and, and tattooing is, is like a package. It's a package deal that comes together. Well, at the moment, tattoos for both Vita and a car are coming together. The results we'll soon see. Here at Mooch's Tattoo Shop, there's a car show, a pack of friends, and a whole lot more. Many here are into rockabilly-style lowriders, as well as having a blast. We just come out here for fun. We're, we're all friends and just here to have a good time. And, you know, plus we get more tattoos, too. Everyone here came to party, and one group insists on having a good time. They're the Las Vixens. More drama yeah, for I know, I know. We're no drama. Yeah, just no here to have another time. We're here to social, get to meet people, and you know, pretty much, you know, they make a, our family bigger. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But no drama. That's one thing we don't allow, no drama. Growing up in LA, you see all these cars as a kid, like, wow. But you usually see guys, and you're like, oh, maybe it's not for me. But then, you know, you grow up and like, why can't it be for me? Back inside, we hear that Vita's tattoo is now completed. That was so easy. Not. <laughs> It's so cute. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Did you see it? Cute. Showing off the art is as much fun for the owner as it is for the artist. In the end, it's all about the pride that comes with creating something special. When you're done, it's like, oh, I was a part of that car. You see it on a turntable, and it's like, I had a part of that, which is really cool. What's also cool is the eternal bond between the owner and the artist. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. No, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely.
It was really cool tattooing Vita. It, it, it was an honor, you know. Um, I was kind of shaky, but I, I think I did all right. I think she was happy with the tattoo. Thank you. Thank you. Rockabilly movement is often about driving your masterpiece while it's still being created. Uh, really, because I don't have the money to finish it yet, so as soon as I get some more money, it'll be nice, but until then, this is what it is, you know? Let's hit the road! For many, the coolest thing about this movement is that the art is loose. It's rough around the edges. It's definitely not stamped by any machine. In short, it's handmade. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. Two sides don't have to be perfect. If you want it, if you want it to be perfect, go, go buy a sticker. We don't sell you perfection. We sell you art. We sell you the love. We sell you the love of the custom culture. These cars create an individual statement, as personal and different as a modified ride, or a tattoo you'll carry for the rest of your life. The only person that you need to impress is yourself. When you walk out that door and you feel good about yourself, about, about the tattoos you have on your arm, about, about the pinstriping that, 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 you know, the art that's on the back of your car. That's what all this is. This is what the custom culture is, because you know it's custom. And to sum it all up in a nutshell. Low riding is low riding, homeboy. That's all it is. Ride so when was the first time you gave a tattoo? Actually, it was my dad. You gave him one? Yeah. They were supposed to be like teardrops. I'm not sure what they turned out to be. It looks like big ass cannonballs on his arm. <laughs> For me, it was just practice. Go ahead, and I get a free tattoo, so. Hey, it was the thought that counted. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it was cool, you know. Living the low life.